So in this video, we're going to look at a little bit more detail at the dev version of Flux, the dev model. So if you haven't seen my beginner's tutorial on how to get started with Flux using replicate.com, then I'll put a link to that in the description below. Replicate.com is just a platform that I personally use to access um, Flux. Now, I've also just done a video focusing on the Schnell version, which is the lowest cost, quicker, technically lowest quality version, which I'll also put a link to in the description so you can check that out. But for this, we're looking at the dev version. So if you're on Replicate and you want to know how to get to the dev version, you can just type Flux into the search bar and it will bring up the options and it will be near, right near the top because it's an official model. Flux dev, there we go. This is the one I would recommend for general use because um, it's a good balance between performance and cost. But we'll go down these options and look at all the settings here and I'll do my best to explain what they are. So the generic prompt it fills in, this is just an example that it fills in automatically. Black Forest Gatto Cake spilling out the words Flux Dev, Tasty Food Photography Dynamic Shot. Now we've put that in the, um, we've got the same thing in the Schnell model that we looked at in a previous video. And it of course gave a different image, but a very similar kind of idea. Um, we've got aspect ratio, which is self-explanatory. You can change this to match your own um, your own needs and requirements. I'm just going to leave it at square for this. Image, now on this model, this is the first big difference between Schnell and Dev. In Dev, you can use an image reference um, to kind of influence the direction of the generation and the render. Now, we'll come back to this in a moment because... Uh, it'll need a few minutes of its own to cover it. So I'm gonna skip this for the moment and I'll come back to it in a short while. The prompt strength number um, correlates to the image. So we'll come back to that as well. Number of outputs between one and four, similar to Schnell or the same as Schnell, it's how many images do you want it to generate every time you click run. Um, I like to do a couple, two or three, maybe just to give you a few options. Um, but obviously bear in mind that for every, every image that you run here will be that cost multiplied by that amount. So if I do three outputs and click run, it's going to cost me three times the single image cost, of course, which we'll talk about the cost in a minute as well. And I'll show you how much it will cost um, on this model to generate images. Now, number of interference steps. As I understand it, and we're going to try and um, explain this in, in a way that makes sense to me, but so please forgive me if anyone's watching from a sort of raw technical point, this isn't completely accurate, but how I understand it is, here it says number of denoising steps, recommended range is 28 to 50 and it defaults to 50. So as part of the process of the images behind the scenes, they're generated from just a mass of random noise. So lots of just pixels and sort of particles that get refined over multiple steps in the background until they generate the final image. And the denoising phase, as I understand, is the more denoising that you you instruct it to do, the simpler the patterns of noise get as part of the generation, which means you get less fine details in the image, but maybe more focus on some of the larger subjects. So in my experiments, if you leave it at 50, you'll generally get a big, like a, a nice, bold, sort of close up, relatively close up image um, that looks nice and refined but without lots of clutter but if you wanted something maybe that was maybe a little bit further away that had more details into the scene more small details then you could take this down if you go below the recommended range it starts to get a bit strange and messy so you, you can introduce too many unnecessary small details into the scene and it starts to just look incoherent and strange so i definitely recommend experiment in between the 28 and 50 range just to give um uh, just to give yourself a little bit, bit more variety but that's one to experiment with but i've had great results anywhere between um yeah 30 to 28 and 50 i've tried it in a few of these different options and um it's worth an experiment with but it's not critical if you just keep that at the default absolutely great results guidance this is another one that i would generally recommend keeping at the default which is 3.5 and the technical description for this in stable diffusion and other places doesn't really match how i find it to work so how it works for me is basically the higher the guidance number the more it will stick to your prompt but at the cost of sort of visual 
integrity. So what I tend to find is if you if you're doing a image of like a realistic photo of like you know realistic photograph of you know your cat in the whatever if you drag the guidance really high that's gonna give you probably more chance of giving you exactly what you've asked for if you put like you know photo of a cat in the garden juggling three tennis balls um the more you drag the guidance up the more it's going to stick to the prompt but at the cost of realism so it's going to start looking oversaturated cartoony as it's trying to force those elements into happening whereas if you get the opposite and your your default guidance number is giving you say if you're just asking for a portrait of a, of a lady in front of a mirror or just something a totally realistic scenario and it's giving you something that looks a bit too cartoony still a little bit too um uncanny sort of unreal then lower the guidance to maybe like two and a half and it will it will kind of, it will give you more realism at the cost of potential creative scope, if that makes sense. So I sometimes tweak this depending on what I'm doing. I rarely go above, but I tend to sometimes go below three and a half if I'm trying to get a more realistic scene. And I just want to take that slightly exaggerated AI looking edge off it. So that's just that's just my recommendation on that. But for 99% of the things, I leave it on 3.5 because the default settings on this have been worked out really well for balance. Um, okay, Seed, we've covered that in the um, Schnell tutorial briefly, but it's a way to come back and generate the exact same image again as long as you've got the seed number um, at a later date. Output format, self-explanatory. Like I said last time, if you've got anything that's got an output quality slider, um, just make sure it's higher than 80. Something close to or 100 is 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 my is uh, my recommendation, so you don't see a quality drop. So I normally put mine to sort of 95 or whatever. And then disable safety checker. That's Don't worry about that. That's irrelevant. So now we've gone through all those features, I'm going to just generate the same three images or the same three prompts as in the Chanel version, just so we can see. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to talk about the cost quickly. So the cost for this is $0.03 an image, so three cents an image, basically. And if we click on show images, 33.3 .3 images for, for a dollar, like roughly speaking. Now the Chanel version was 10 times that amount. It was like 333, but the quality is generally a lot less than you will get from this model. So if I just click run now, and we're gonna run this, we're gonna run three of these. It's gonna take a bit longer than the Chanel version, obviously Chanel meaning quick or fast in German, um, but it's gonna give us some good results, I'm hoping. And what I'm going to do after this is generated and after I've done the third video covering the pro mode, I'm then going to do a comparative video that just shows these prompts, but next to, you know, next to each other, the Schnell, the dev and the pro on the same screen. So you can just see a comparison of how the different models stack up against each other with the same prompt. But at the moment, I'm just going to let this run. And... Yeah, this looks this looks fun. Look at those hands. Okay, so we've got the cat, the British short hair cat lifting weights in the gym, and um, with a white towel around his neck. Let's have a look at that one. Okay, this one's a little bit strange. His hands aren't really holding anything, and that one's quite good. So the first, the number one and number three, um, work well. Although number one, he's got strange, very human hands, which is looks a bit odd. But it's doing what we've asked. And if you've seen the Chanel video, you'll know that all three results had some fairly major problems with the cat actually holding on to the weights or the, everything even looking as it should. So straight away, this is a lot more coherent. The image makes a lot more sense and um, the quality is notably higher, apart from the second one. But this is why it's good to run a few images at once because if you just run one, you guarantee that one is going to be perhaps a dud that you that would have been the minority of the results. Okay, so I'm now going to run the next prompt, which I've just copied and pasted from a text file. Moody portrait of a depressed clown with half-worn makeup smoking a cigarette. I'm going to click run, but I'm just to save a few minutes of boring screen time, I'm just going to edit this out to when they've generated. Okay, so let's have a look at these generations. First one is... um. 
yeah, quite nice covering the end of the cigarette with his finger, which is a bit fortunate. But this one is going for a black and white look, which I didn't ask for, but it's quite it's quite nice anyway. Apart from the very end of the cigarette, there's a tiny bit of colour in that. This one's quite nice. And this one would be a really good if the cigarette was sticking out between his fingers. That's a really good natural smoking kind of you know pose. It doesn't look too it doesn't look too artificially posed or anything like that. That would be quite a nice candid kind of um, image. But you could take that into um, photo editor and fix that yourself if you really like that image. Um, so three good results. Again, the, the the placement of the cigarette and the finger things like that that's just the look of the draw when it comes to the random factor of the generation so if if you're along the right lines with this prompt say and you you like the images you get but maybe the cigarettes not quite right just try and run a couple more generations and you'll probably get one that you really like so i'm going to test one last one last prompt here that i've used in the chanel just so we can keep things consistent a black muscle car driving in a desert the sky is dark moody atmospheric the dust is red photorealistic so we got some really good results in Chanel for this image. Actually, I was quite surprised at how good they look considering the Chanel model is the lowest quality, faster model. Okay, so here we go. Okay, that looks fantastic. It's really good. Nice headlight effect on the floor there. Yeah, they, these are exactly what I'm looking for. Now look down here this is another point a bit strange for this prompt but it says here potential not safe for work content was detected in one or more images a blank image will be returned instead um, so this image will not be returned total safe image of two out of three so that's not saying that there's something wrong with the prompt but the result that it's generated before it's even shown it to me it's deemed as not safe for work like something wrong with it a bit dodgy which is very strange considering the nature of the prompt it's just a car but you will occasionally get that 